Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we explored how the stones are crushed, screened, and then roasted step by step. If you missed that important phase, don't worry. You'll find the link in the description box below. And before we dive into today's episode, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. And don't forget to like the video to help us reach more people who are passionate about this subject. Warning, this process is hazardous. Always wear safety goggles, protective gloves, respiratory mask and work outdoors or under a fume hood. Your safety comes first. After roasting, we first wash the concentrate thoroughly to remove some impurities that may be present in the roasted material. This step helps improve the effectiveness of the following processes such as acid leaching by eliminating any unwanted materials that might affect the quality of the final result. Now that our concentrate has been properly roasted, we've prepared it for the next critical phase, acid leaching. Leaching is a process where we use a carefully chosen acid solution to dissolve specific metals from the roasted material, separating them from the ones that remain solid. It's like asking certain metals to leave the mix and go into the liquid while others stay behind. At this stage, our goal is to remove cobalt and nickel, which have now been oxidized during roasting and are more easily dissolved. For this purpose, we'll typically use a diluted solution of hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. These acids are strong enough to react with the metal oxides, forming soluble metal salts that move into the solution, leaving the gold and iridium untouched still in solid form. We begin add water and by slowly adding the acid to our roasted powder here I used sulfuric acid, which we place in a glass beaker or acid safe container. As the acid touches the material, a reaction begins. You might see a light bubbling or smell a sharp acidic vapor. This is a sign that the acid is reacting with the oxides of cobalt and nickel. It's important to stir the mixture gently and give it time often several hours to allow complete leaching. During this time, the solution will gradually change color, usually turning greenish or bluish depending on the concentration of nickel and cobalt in the mix. What's fascinating here is that this process is very selective. Gold and iridium, due to their chemical stability and resistance, do not dissolve in these simple acids. They remain at the bottom of the container, safe and separated from the other metals now dissolved in the liquid. Once the reaction is complete, we filter the mixture using filter paper or a fine mesh. The liquid contains our dissolved base metals cobalt and nickel salts. The solid residue that remains is what we care most about next. It contains gold, iridium, and possibly other noble metals, now free from the bulk of the interfering material. Acid leaching is a key moment in our experiment. It's here where we really start to purify removing the unnecessary and focusing in on the rare and the precious. With patience and careful handling, we are one step closer to isolating pure gold and iridium. Have you ever wondered how metals are melted and extracted at temperatures exceeding 2,400 degrees Celsius? That kind of extreme heat isn't something you can reach with an ordinary furnace, it requires a special industrial grade one, far beyond the reach of most of us. Since I don't have access to such a powerful furnace myself, I turn to a friend who owns one of the rarest high temperature furnaces in this field. He kindly agreed to help me out, but unfortunately, we weren't allowed to film inside the workshop due to strict privacy rules and safety regulations. But don't worry, you'll still get to see the result. I'll be showing you the final product after it's gone through the intense heat and rigorous process, a rare and valuable piece that's definitely worth the wait. Can you guess what kind of metal withstood 2,400 degrees Celsius and emerged from the fire in all its glory? Drop your guesses in the comments below. 
After separating the precipitate from sulfuric acid through filtration, the product is carefully washed several times with distilled water to eliminate any residual acid. This process is conducted under controlled conditions to avoid secondary reactions or alterations to the final compound, ensuring the purity and chemical stability of the sample. Iridium Processing Iridium is considered one of the rarest and hardest metallic elements known on Earth. It is highly resistant to heat and corrosion, which makes it difficult to melt and process using conventional methods. It does not melt easily, even when exposed to extremely high temperatures. To collect or purify it, special furnaces are required capable of generating very high temperatures exceeding 2,000 for 100 degrees Celsius. This temperature is sufficient to melt this stubborn metal. It is recommended to use plasma furnaces or electric arc furnaces for this purpose as they can produce concentrated and efficient heat. After melting, the metal can be cooled and collected as solid pure ingots or converted into fine metallic powder used in precision industries. It may also be sold directly in its raw purified form, provided that its purity is verified and it is completely separated from accompanying impurities and other metals like ruthenium or palladium. Iridium is used in advanced applications such as manufacturing aircraft spark plugs, surgical tools, and microelectronics due to its unique properties. The method used was as follows. First, the gold was melted at a temperature of 1,100 degrees Celsius, then poured into a mold, completing the melting process. This led to the separation of gold from iridium due to the difference in melting points and density. Thanks for watching.